Hey, let me talk to you real quick about brandishing weapons. Today is Monday, May the 3rd, 2021. My name is Alex. This is Proof of Life. This is the Corporate Cowboys podcast powered by Incorporating Associates. And uh, I just want to talk to you about brandishing weapons. What kind of weapons, you might ask? Knives, guns, picks? A bludgeon of some kind. I'm talking about garrots or knuckles. Nah. You. You are the weapon. You are the weapon. The knowledge you possess. The skills you've developed. Your intelligence. Your experience. Your aptitudes. Your capability. Can be weaponized can be weaponized and when it comes time to brandish it you want to go from looking like a square to not leaving a witness that's zero to a hundred in an instant when and if if and when it gets to that situation when push comes to shove when drag comes to drop, when cut comes to run, when pick comes to poke, (laughs) brandishing a weapon, you you don't even, I mean, you probably can't get away with some style points, you probably can get away with some style points, but the more style you have, if you haven't exercised it before if you haven't practiced it beforehand you run the risk of slipping up nobody likes to show off nobody likes to show off because when the going gets tough when it's time to do dirt a show off can slip up a team would much rather would much rather have a person who is capable of doing the work from start to finish and not starting off in a flashy, flamboyant manner and then fucking up, slipping, letting the mark get away, letting the target, letting your victim get away, leaving a fucking witness. <laughs> Dude, Alex, how is this applicable to corporate? Why is it so fucking aggressive? I'm not talking about killing here. I mean, I suppose it's like a quote-unquote little murder. Where we necessarily take out folks' entire livelihoods. And the folks I run with, people I've dealt with. They could take out entire families with with one sentence, with one oration of a of a paragraph and make it sound so sweet, so comprehensive, almost poetic. You almost poetic. That their marks, their victims, I've seen it come across their face. They almost they almost harmonize with it. They can see the end coming. They're bearing witness to the person in front of them going from a square, a business partner, a professional into a straight murderer. They can see that transformation in real time. I'm telling you, 0 to 100. And when you're there to witness, when you're a party to that sort of transaction, that sort of exchange, I don't even feel bad. (laughs) I don't even feel bad. I'll be honest. You can't feel bad. You can't feel bad for these motherfuckers because they saw it coming. They saw it coming. When you... When you pull the ski mask off 
and that's probably the most stylistic I'll ever get. Is just pulling the ski mask off so they know who's behind the gun. And it's just this one person. I'm not, like, I might air out the whole fucking room and then leave the one for last who I need to have understand what it is they set into motion because they saw it coming. They saw it coming. So I'm telling you right now, they will see it coming. Don't take it easy on them. Don't take it easy on them. They know what they're doing. They are also playing the game. When it comes time to brandish weapons, it might not even be brandishing. You're just using them in the course of your work. Why? Because it's it's in the scope of your job. It's something you have to do. What kind of weapons am I talking about? I already said, it's not a knife. It's not a gun. It is you. It is you. There might be circumstances when folks say, oh, you're just biting the hand that feeds you or whatever the fuck. But no, if they ever put themselves in a situation, if you, if you, or not, not, fuck that, if I, (laughs) if I ever put myself in a situation to be feeding somebody else, recognize that there's a responsibility there to keep them fed, to keep them well fed. That's a whole other podcast on, on, on self-actualization, on always, always being a little hungry and just keeping food, keeping energy and reserve for when you're actually starving, but always being a little hungry. I don't mean gluttonous. So if I'm feeding somebody else, I'm not feeding them until they're fucking full and stuffed and can't move. And then as soon as they have a little bit of space, shoveling more resources down their throat, because they don't need it. They're not using it. They don't know what to fucking do with it. And realize that these are individuals that I've already vetted. I know who the fuck I run with. I know whether I should start off feeding them. Sometimes you don't even need to feed them. Sometimes you don't even need to feed them. Because they're not hungry. They're not hungry. You just got to show them what hunger looks like. What hunger does to a person. How hunger can turn humility into ambition, the right kind of ambition. How hunger unlocks that pathway from just a business professional to a corporate cowboy. Because if you brandish your weapon too early, it's like the equivalent of, uh, I want to say it's pretty, cl- it's pretty close to showing off. It's pretty close to showing your hand. Showing your hand beforehand. Showing your hand prematurely. Sometimes it's, it's warranted to jump the gun. To just yank that thing out. And spray without even aiming. Squeeze. (laughs) And then aim second. (laughs) Squeeze first, aim second. Sometimes, rarely. I've I've only seen it a handful of times. Can literally count it on my on one hand. Where you have to pull out, just fucking squeeze. (laughs) And even then it's a fucking crapshoot. Even then, it's a coin flip. So when you are brandishing what it is you know, when you are brandishing 
your expertise, when you are brandishing your knowledge in order to uh, shut somebody down. And it might not even be to shut somebody down when I say weapon. A weapon could be a tool. It's just a tool. So when you brandish your tool, when you brandish your piece, it's to seal something. It's to get some commitment out of something. And the commitment is absolute. You're looking for an absolute result. It's the only time you want to pull your tool out. You want to pull your weapon out to be using it. It's to get an absolute result. A result which you will be certain to a very high degree, almost absolutely certain, that the result that will come from you using your tool, from you using your weapon, will be the result you were aiming for. And that could be to close a deal. That could be to get a yes. That could be to get a no. You have to assess and evaluate, evaluate closely the situation and the circumstances that you find yourself in in order to understand how you using your weapon, how you deploying your tool will impact the end result. And I hope and I pray it, it is the outcome you want. It's the outcome that you need. Because if you brandish it too early, you lose a professional element. It's not even a, a, an element of surprise. Because it, in this instance, the people that you deal with, the people who deal with you, should know what you're capable of. The majority should. At least those on your side. At least those in your camp. At least those in your shop. They should know... They should know how you work. They should know how you run. They should know how you operate. And it's not even how you operate. They should know the principles that you adhere to. And how fucking around with the principles can be detrimental to the operation, to, to the mission statement, to organizational goals you all keep together. In instances, in instances where I've had to brandish weapons, I've always been really nice about it. I've, I'm thankful, I'm grateful that I've been trained and I've developed the ability to, uh, I almost want to say it's like a sleight of hand. And I've seen people who work in a similar capacity where they could fucking poke you in the neck and you'd think it was a part of the job. <laughs> you would think it's another Monday morning. <laughs> they could they could get you caught up. Not even like riled up. It's like a form of entrancement. It's like a form of enchantment. They do their work so well that you will be dying. I don't mean of laughter. I mean like literally like your career will be over and you'll think it was supposed to happen. You'll th <laughs> you will believe you saw it coming and think it was normal. It's a part of the process such as life. Do you understand <laughs> the magnitude of ability you have to have in order to pick somebody up and skewer them and have them think it's just a thing that happens. <laughs> Bro, I... <laughs> it's 
damn. It's <laughs> it's just a thing that happens. It's just <clears throat> par for the course. <laughs> You're born alive and you <laughs> what is it? Oh, how's it go? Fuck, how did it go? You're born alive and you die, um Ah, you die living or something like that. Ah, fuck. I forget how it goes. You're you're born alive and you die living or something like that. <laughs> it's slipping my mind right now. But that's a professional. And just to analogize it to corporate, it's the equivalence of managers talking with one another and trying to get tips on the best way to fire somebody and not have an, an employee go fucking postal <laughs> it's like what kind of um hey alex what kind of gloves do you use when you handle radioactive materials <laughs> that kind of thing and that's what i mean by tools that's what i mean by weapons and this Example and that example, it was only gloves. Are gloves weapons? No, they're tools. They could be weapons, I suppose, in the right hands, the right type of gloves, all that. <laughs> That's essentially it. And you're not actually working with these people with fucking radioactive and what is it? Impervious gloves, gloves impervious to radioactive substances. No, you're talking about what kind of verbal tools, what kind of professional tools do you use? What kind of, what kind of ability should I develop? That's, that would be me reading between the lines when they're asking me how to, the best way to get rid of an employee is to quote unquote, let them down easy. Fuck that. I'm not letting them down easy. <laughs> Unless they were really valuable. I mean, if they're a piece of shit employee, why would you let them down easy? You want corporate to fucking slap them out of the corporate world. You want to be the representative that absolutely KO'd the fuck out of their career. If they are a piece of shit, you want to be the one to do it. You want to be the one to do it. Why? <laughs> because any press is good press. <laughs> That way they know why they got canned. That way they know why their livelihood got destroyed. That way they can run and tell somebody else how the fuck Alex gets down. That way they can try and explain. <laughs> they can try to explain some to someone else the way their life flashed before their eyes. There's no way to describe that. Anybody who's come back from death and said, my fucking life flashed before my eyes. I saw the first time I fell in love. I saw the day my child was born. I saw fucking my first tooth. I got a, you know, a quarter from the tooth fairy or some shit. There's no way to describe it. And if you are a piece of shit, your circle will see it. You tell somebody, ah, oh, they let me go because of this, nah, da, 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 da. But if you're already a piece of shit in your own circle, nobody's going to believe you. Nobody's going to give a fucking shit about you. Unless you're giving them some other benefit, they might stick around to hear you out. They might gas you up a little bit. But if you're, if you're a piece of shit, if you were a piece of shit, you are already a coward. You ain't gonna go postal. Nobody gives a fuck. <laughs> you ain't gonna do shit. <clears throat> My bad, I got carried away a little bit there. You see, because a good employee, a good employee has reason to go postal. Might almost, almost be justified depending on the who, the what, the where, the when, the why. Might almost be justified. But a piece of shit, somebody who's, I don't know, some kind of psycho, narcissistic, pathological BSer, some fucking liar, some 
deluded. <laughs> they ain't gonna do shit. <laughs> oh man. All right. Well. <laughs> <laughs> and when it comes time to brandish a weapon, like, <clears throat> I'll leave you with this. Be as stylish as you would fucking like. Just know that you're rolling the dice in doing so, okay? Just know you are shooting craps when you aim for style points. Why? Because you leave a gap. Between when you start your quote-unquote finishing move and when they have time to react. I don't, I don't want to give anybody any quarter. Fuck that. I give no one any quarter. I'm in and out. I'm in and out. I walk in. Pull, squeeze, aim, squeeze again, and I'm out. I'm done. <laughs> I'm not sticking around like, like throwing a, 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 a pseudo haymaker, a, a fucking a pseudo haymaker with this fucking four pound piece of steel. Like I need you to fucking see it and take a mental picture to send a God with you. No, <laughs> I, don't, I don't need that in my life. I don't. I'm in and out. Some fucking corporate cowboy shit. Think about that. Mull it over. And again, they don't always have to be weapons, but the result must be absolute. Have a great Monday. Visit us on Instagram, the Corporate Cowboys page. Try to keep it um, somewhat active and up to date. Always. Corporate Cowboys podcast on Patreon. You can subscribe for a monthly. Uh, though the episodes are like every other day almost. Try to do at least one or twice a week. You can shoot us a donation on Cash App. This operation is all nonprofit. And as soon as it goes legal, baby, we don't we won't even have to be looking for loopholes. We won't even have to be looking for loopholes. To jump through. We will just be doing work and have the loopholes work around us. <laughs> Ambitious. I like it. Cash app. That's dollar sign. Corporate Cowboys. PayPal.me slash Corporate Cowboys. And Venmo. Me directly at Alex underscore Coco. Those funds go towards expenses and legal fees. And as always, we'll keep you posted. Have yourselves a great Monday, a great week. We will catch you next time.